My Govan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Ara here, Gala Jirithan, head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome to the second of two overviews detailing most of the, most of the, uh, many of the largest changes to the forces of good in Divide and Conquer version 3. Now, many of the changes you're about to hear have been covered in a video, I can't remember when, quite a while ago, because it deals with mostly the Dwarven Overhaul, a project undertaken by Hummingbird to give the Dwarves some variation and diversity. Um, and we start with the forces of Erebor, who are laid out before you as you can see. Um, so this was a sub-mod in version 2.2, but it was made part of the mod proper in version 3. So. First and foremost, Erebor units now typically have the highest melee attack and charge of all three Dwarven factions. So they are the most aggressive of the new uh, Dwarven sort of overhaul, the new, the new way they play. However, several of their units now have a slightly lower defense than they had before. Uh, so they pay for their aggression with a little bit less um, defense. Uh, now, many of their units now have throwing axes. So, King's Crossbows were removed from the game and renamed King's Warriors. And they were given throwing axes rather than crossbows. And otherwise, they are just axe and shield units. As you can see, some of them here after having been upgraded. So, those are your King's Warriors. Um... In addition, the Axe Guard of Erebor, who I should have knocking around here somewhere. There they are. Uh, there we are. They also now throw an axe before they get out their two-handed axe. So um, you've got two. You've got a more elite axe throwing unit in the Axe Guard of Erebor, and a more mainstream axe throwing unit in the King's Warriors, which is very good. You can no longer train Dwarven Travelers, so the dedicated archer unit is gone, and now most of your range comes from the Orokani Clan Hall which can be built in the Misty Mountains. And from there you will get both Stiffbeard Archers, represented here, and Blacklock Engineers. The replenishing rate of the units from the Orokanis has been sped up... <coughs> from the Orokani, sorry, has been sped up so that they train a little faster as well. Orokani Nobles have been renamed to Iron Fist Hammers. Uh, and there they are. So they retain the same visuals, but they're now called Iron Fist Hammers. The old Iron Fist Axes have been renamed to Orokani Warriors and are no longer available to Erebor. They are now a Kandish only unit. So they are no longer in your roster. So you've lost one Orokani unit. Iron Hills Mattox, standing before you here, are now slightly worse than they were before, but they can now be trained everywhere. So they are no longer just from Kirigathol. Um, in addition, your King's units, so any you, these are your mainstream, your, your, your main battle line units are called King's XYZ. There's King's Warriors, there's uh, somewhere else. I got another unit of them along here somewhere. There we are, King's Axes. They have a slightly changed first tier visual. So as you can see here, there's a lot more chain mail going on than there was before. And they don't have any of the green colouring that there was in their roster before then. They're now all reds and oranges. So slight change to their visuals. The Dragon Slayers of Ered Mithrin have been given Black Goldfish's slightly heavier looking armour. Um, so a bit more... Um, just heavier, that's the best word for it. You can see they've got some pauldrons, they may not have had those before. And they've got full plate um, with chainmail underneath and above. Dragon Slayers now are finally armour piercing, as they should always have been from the start, really. But they did lose a little bit of an attack, um, a little bit of an attack stat, in order to compensate for that. Now, rather rarely, Erebor, rather than relying purely on mercenaries, can now train Dale Cavalry from the Town Hall in Erebor alone. Oh no, sorry. So they've been moved from the Town Hall and they're now in Erebor's unique building, which I believe is called Throne of... Um, I can't remember. Throne of something. But uh, So they're trained out of there. And equally from the same building, you can also now get, um, quite rarely, Dalian Woodsman Archers. Let's just speed this up a bit so that we see some sort of uh, engagement. So you get um, the cavalry and archers, Dalian archers, from your unique building in your capital, and rather than from the town hall line. 
So that's Erebor. Now we move on to Ered Lewin. So Ered Lewin have been changed from bottom to top, really, and their battlefield tactics are now largely based around crossbows and pikemen. So they have a much bigger theme of crossbows and pikes, as opposed to swords, I would say, was probably their main theme before now. Um, their unique archers or crossbows who are here firing directly in front of us, the Broad Beam Marksmen, are now the game's absolute hands down, standalone, best ranged crossbow unit. They are very, very deadly. Longest range of any crossbow unit, highest damage of any crossbow unit, most accurate crossbow unit, etc, etc. Now the keen eyed amongst you will note that they do not have the faster firing crossbow animation. Which in the on the actual map on the actual game looks like they put their they don't turn around to load it they just put it on the floor load it in front of them and fire, and the reason dwarves don't have that animation is because it is for human sized units only and we don't have the expertise to tailor it to the dwarves so instead they have just been statistically made the very very best. Uh, so there's a little buff for them. Now their melee units are not quite as strong as anyone else offensively or defensively amongst the dwarves. So Ered Lewin are now the worst um, melee based dwarven faction. Now they are still excellent in melee compared to other nations, but as the dwarves go they are now the ones that are most, most reliant on um, thinning the enemy down with crossbow fire before engaging in melee. Uh, there are two AOR units, the Firebeard Warriors, who are somewhere around here. We'll find them. There they are, Firebeard Warriors. This unit is AOR to the Blue Mountains and a few regions around the Blue Mountains, as are the Broadbeam Marksmen. So the Marksmen being the best crossbow unit in the game comes at a price in that they are slightly harder to get now. Uh, and there's the other Firebeard Warriors upgraded with their chainmail, fighting essentially their identical brothers from the Iron Hills. Anyway, there we are. Uh, the heir the of Ered Lewin now has Broadbeam Marksman as his bodyguard. So you can see there that they've got a Longbeard Phalanx now instead of what was a sword unit. And uh, if you wish to see them upgraded, they are around here again somewhere. Apologies, I can't uh, do much for the trying to find them. I just have to try and find them. Maybe they're over there. Ah, oh, yes, there they are. Longbeard Phalanx. So as you can see, they get armour again. More pauldrons, more heavily armoured. Also, Ered Lewin, these changes may have come before, but I thought I might as well mention them. Gabilgothol Guard used to be Gabilgothol Hammer Guard, but are now a sword-wielding defensive unit. And there's another unit of um, their crossbows, reflecting that they have more crossbows now. Azagal's Tomb Protectors also got a complete redesign, as you can see, and they look nothing like they used to look before, giving them... They completely stand out now. They don't just look like a blue version of the Erebor Axe Guard, which they did in the past. Um, so that is Ered Lewin, a much more pike and crossbow-focused faction with the worst melee units of the dwarves. And then we come to the dwarves of Khazad-dum. So Khazad-dum units typically have the highest armour and shield stat of all of the dwarves. So they are the defensive dwarven nation. So you've got range, melee, or range, offence and defence. And Khazad-dum take defence. Sorry, defence. I am betraying my countrymen. Now, they have had a speed reduction, however. And the Zenith Guard, which are the bodyguard. There they are. Zenith Guard... Legion Axe Guard, who have been renamed to Hammer Guard, there they are. Legion Hammer Guard, Legion Deeping Guard, the first Legion who are standing up there. Khazadum Reclaimers and Khazadum Guardians are all now much slower than they were before. They now have a 90% movement speed opposed to 100%, which um, like standard humans have. And um, But a few of their units, so the Khazad Sentries and the... Uh, not the Khazad Sentries, sorry, the Dwarven Travellers and Hithyaglia Beast Hunters, who are around here somewhere. Um, they are now 100% mo movement speed, so they don't have any movement speed reduction. So they are the fastest Dwarven units, the Dwarven Travellers and Hithyaglia Beast Hunters, who may well be hidden at the moment because they're not moving um, and they can hide anywhere. So, Khazad Sentries now use a spear and shield instead of pikes. So the pike... The early tier Khazad Pike unit has been given a spear instead of a pike. Uh, because the pikes obviously have been given over to Ered Lewin. 
Kazadum's armor-piercing units now all use hammers rather than axes, which has no bearing on the stats whatsoever, but it's just a little um, visual quirk that Hummingbird wanted to add, so that there was again a nice differentiation between the factions. Now, such as the Hammer Guard, for example, who used to be called Axe Guard and have been changed. Um, I tell you what, we can probably go to times one now because we're virtually there. Um, the Hithyglia Beast Hunter's unit size has been slightly increased, but they are no longer armor-piercing archers, so their arrows and do not have armor-piercing benefits anymore. That is now gone. Um, and I'm sure I added them, but uh, maybe I just didn't. No, but they're not there to show you, I'm afraid. Kazadum Reclaimers have had their visuals tweaked. And um, they look more akin to the Guardians et al. With the silver armor rather than the gold. So there's Kazadum Guardians with their new silver armor instead of gold armor. Because most of the roster, of course, is silver. There's the Legion Shield Guard looking very good. Kazad Volunteers in the front there. Uh, the Khazad Volunteers, Dwarven Sentries, and one other... Um, Dwarven Travellers have all been given a little visual tweak so that they've got an actual pack on their back, as you can see. So it is as if they are actually travelling somewhere, which is quite good. Um, there are Reclaimers somewhere. There they are. So if we just zoom in on them. Khazadum Reclaimers, there you are. No longer gold. And they look very, very good now. They have a two-handed hammer, as you can see. They didn't have that in the past. That is also new to them. Kazadum Guardians, which I showed you a moment ago, have a larger shield as well. And Barlin's Guard has a new unupgraded look, which is being shown off here, um, which is a little bit more uniform and matches with the rest of the roster. Um, one final change, which doesn't pertain to the battle map here, but a battle map, is that Moria East... The terrain height underneath the bridge of Khazad-dum has been raised and a black texture was, pla was placed on top of it. So now when you're fighting in Moria, no longer when you pass the bridge of Khazad-dum will your camera just drop to into an abyss. That just doesn't happen anymore. So that has been covered and rectified, which is excellent. So that's Khazad-dum, the defensive dwarven nation. And now a few tweaks to the Anduin, who are over here somewhere. Uh, the Anduin have got a new battlefield banner. There it is, with a paw instead of an eagle, reflecting the fact that they're based on bears not rather than eagles. And also the Greenwood Foresters, who should be one of these, or are likely hiding somewhere. Oh, there they are, shooting. They've been given a visual redesign, so they look a little bit more like rangers rather than just kind of hunters in the forest. They look like a dedicated military battalion. And that's them there, firing with the Sylvan March Wardens in tow. And just turn down my headset because it is deafening me, these battle sounds. This is why I have it turned down the speed, because then the minute we're at the, too many units for the game to handle, so the camera j is really jarring. Right, and then lastly then we come to Enid Wythe. So Enid Wythe have also been given a new battlefield banner. If we can find <laughs> someone who is not dead. The enemy are badly bloodied. There we, we are. Have lost half their men. So again, their banner now just reflects their new icon. Um, although it is... I would rather the colour below and above match the colour of the actual design. I'm sure that's something that I can change. Um, additional Enidwyth units have a hide anywhere trait. So more Enidwyth units are now sneaky, stealthy buggers who will hide anywhere you want them to. Uh, Angren Raiders are now recruited from the port line of buildings rather than the barracks. Uh, but they're a little bit better in melee than they were before as well. So they've just been given a little bit of a buff. River Elders now use Javelins. Foolishly, I don't think I queued up any River Elders, so I can't show you them. But they now have Javelins as well as their Spear and Shield. So an extra Javelin unit has been added to Ennard White. Uh, the Moot Pikemen have been removed. And in their stead are those standing before you now. The Minhiriath. Warriors. They are a berserker-style unit with a two-handed sword that is incredibly deadly in melee. Um, they're much better than they were before, uh, when they were the Moot Pikemen or whatever it was. So Minhirith Warriors rise where Moot Pikemen now fall into the abyss and the nothingness that awaits them. Kazad sentries up against the Anduin trying to hold them at bay. So there we are. Those are all of the changes for the forces of good. Um, again, pertaining mostly to the battle map. Um, and somewhat to the campaign map a little. But the, most of the campaign changes were very minor, if at all. Like little financial changes or stat increases or decreases, things like that. 
But anyway, there we are. So that is the forces of good. Now, the next episode will cover the forces of evil, and there is not very much to say about evil, so I probably will do it all in one video. Now, I appreciate these videos have nowhere near the quality or the kind of... Um, focus that they used to have before where I would cover every single thing about the faction from its campaign tips and tricks to the battle um, to the army but as, as I said there's just not enough changes to merit redoing all of those so you have to just put up with these I'm afraid but for now and until we speak again dear friends that will be all so thank you very much for watching if indeed you have and until we speak again and farewell <laughs>